How do you handle a strong-willed child who just won't stay in bed? <laughs> Lots of people face this problem every single night. Um, and today I'm gonna give you five steps that you can take to work on that and to improve that and to keep that little one in bed. Now, this is gonna probably happen with um, sort of toddler to preschooler age children, most of all. Um, if they're in a bed under the age of two and a half, you're in for quite a battle. Um, you can still follow these steps, but just be aware it may be harder because they don't actually get the cognitive ability to understand the concept of staying in bed until they're at least two and a half. So if you have put your little one into a bed prior to the age of two and a half, you, you could be at this for a while, um, maybe until they're at two and a half or older. Um, it, you can still work on it, but just be aware it's not gonna happen quite so easily. Um, if you're in between and you're sort of thinking, ooh, that's interesting, what do I do? If you can keep your little one in a cot until close to the age of three, um, then you'll find it so much easier um, once they're in a bed. Uh, but yeah, if they're under two and a half, then it's gonna be a struggle. If they're two and a half or older, and you have a strong will child that just won't stay in bed, then you can follow these five steps and hopefully you'll conquer it nice and quickly. So, step one, commit to a change, okay? You want a fresh start, begin a fresh new plan because the chances are you have tried various things. Um, you may have tried some of the things I'm gonna suggest, but you need to just wipe the slate clean and formulate a brand new plan that you, you get clear on before you even begin. So make sure you know what that is, what that looks like and what you're going to do and how you're gonna execute that. So for instance, if you're going to say, right, um, every time my child gets up, I'm going to walk them back and put them in bed, then get clear on that. What does that look like? Um, it needs to be the same every time. So it can't be that for 10 goes you walk them back and then on the 11th you've had enough and you start telling them off or you know you just got to be very very clear on what that plan looks like once you've got your plan and yourself and anyone else that's that's caring for the child that may be doing bedtime knows what that plan is so that it's delivered the same way every time then just discuss it with your child in the light of day not at bedtime not when they're exhausted um just you know, in a nice, cool, calm, and positive way, with positive language, just let them know that, hey, you know, this is what we're going to do now. And I'm, um, you know, mummy or daddy, I've been, I've been um, finding out about this, and I now know what I need to do to help you. So I'm going to help you, and um, we're going to do this, aren't we? And I just get them on board. Most little ones can understand what you're saying, even from a young age where they maybe can't communicate back to you but they do know what you're saying to them. Certainly from 20, 20, 21 months, they're gonna know what you're talking about and then be on there. As I said, ideally we're talking about kids that are two and a half or older anyway, so they're definitely gonna understand what you're saying to them. Um, and just let them know, be really positive, not right, this is how it's gonna be now, you know, and that's, that's daunting and that's just gonna make them feel either anxious or cross or not very happy about it. So get them on board, get them on side, make it like a team effort. We're gonna do this together, we can do it, yeah, you know, it's really positive. And uh, let them know what it looks like. So, what you, you know, you're gonna stay in bed, aren't you? And, um, and, and, you know, make sure that you don't come and disturb mummy or daddy. Just have a conversation, get them on board, make it nice and positive. Try and use positive language as much as possible, letting them know what you do want them to do, not what you don't want them to do. Set clear targets as well. Step three, set clear targets for your child. So you don't just wanna say, um, the objective is to be good tonight. <laughs> what does that mean really, you know, to a child? Um, and if you're gonna go down the reward shot kind of route, that could be very vague. Am I gonna get my sticker in the morning or am I not? And you might even think, well, he was quite good. Um, didn't quite manage that bit, but it's too vague, so be very clear about what you expect. How is a child gonna do what you want them to do if they don't really know what it looks like? So explain that, you know, they get ready for bed nicely, they're gonna settle down after story time, mummy's gonna tuck you in, and um, 
to say night night and then you're going to go to sleep and then if you wake up in the night and you know it's still dark just lie back down there's some wonderful clocks that can tell them that as well so that they look up and go oh yeah it's still night time lie back down and then you go back to sleep um, and you know and again your response you don't need to tell them what your response is going to be but your response if that is walking them back or or um, you know gesturing that they go back to bed that they know what to do because you've already said you're going to go back to sleep <laughs> and um, and uh, you know it's not morning time yet just be very clear about exactly what you expect and what you want to see um, but in their language in a way they can understand and comprehend so set clear targets um, and then maintain a cool and calm persona uh, around the whole bedtime nighttime response so I kind of call this nighttime mode um, when you say goodnight, when it's kind of lights out nighttime and you're saying goodnight at that last point, you're then going into nighttime mode. So there's no more full voice, everything's just a whisper, if anything. One or two words whispered like night night or lie down or sleepy time or mummy's here, <laughs> but just nothing more. One or two words shh, and whisper. And if you need to shush, shush is fine, that's fine. Just shh. You said it's a very good signal, it's a white noise sound. It's non-stimulating, so just lose the vocal and bring it to a whisper. Um, be just very cool and calm. The cool and calm is great, but I think the words bland and boring better emphasize what I'm trying to get across here because to any toddler or preschooler, if they can get something from you, positive or negative, an interaction is an interaction and they thrive on it. So even if you're there telling them off, you might think, well, why would they like that? Trust me, they'll keep going because they've got a response from you and they want, they want to engage with you. So just keep it bland, boring, uninteresting so that there's no incentive to keep doing it. If you are doing the whole replacing your child back, taking them back to bed, and you are at the 20th time, the 20th time needs to look exactly the same as the first time and the second time. Every time needs to look the same. So you're just, and you're just in that kind of zombie-like, boring, like nothing to see here, you know, just really uninteresting. Try not to engage with even eye contact. I mean, yeah, you can look in their direction, but it's not lovey, dovey, cuddly, or, you know, engaging, fun time. That's for the daytime. At night time, you're trying to show your child it's time to go to sleep. And, you know, you're not cross, you're not angry, you're not in any way, um, and if you feel a bit tense or a bit stressed, try and just take some breaths and calm because they'll sense that. Um, and and just, just, just be calm, just be chilled. Go into a meditative state <laughs> and just like, shh, to bed. Zombie-like. <laughs> um, and that will really help as well. And then step five, I've touched, touched a little bit on this already, but really it's about responding consistently and for as long as it takes. So it really is absolutely vital that every single time it's the same. And if you're just beginning this and it's a fresh new plan, you might be in for a while, a long haul. You might be in for 20, 30 putbacks or whatever you're doing. You might really be in for it for a while. But if you can see it through, test of wills. <laughs> Be the stronger one, we'll, you know, win, that, win that match. If you can see it through um, and, and persevere, the next time it will be cut in half. They won't go for as long. There's no way they'll go for as long because they know there's no out other outcome. They know what to expect from you. And the next time it'll get quicker and quicker until they're fine. And then they maybe just test you and they might just change their behavior and go, ah, hang on a minute, what if I do something differently? What if I throw all my teddies across the room? What if I wet my bed? Or what if I, you know, they do funny things. And if they do something different or out of character after things have been quite steady, don't panic, don't change your behavior. That's exactly what it's designed for. They change their behavior to see if you'll change your behavior. As long as you keep your behavior on the straight and narrow and you keep going, the response is the same. They're not gonna do that thing again. And I've seen this happen so many times and the parents that are resilient and that see it through are just so thrilled with the speed of the results that they get 
and it's the ones that um, really struggle to see things through and that do sort of waver and falter that it takes longer and and just imagine if that's um, because you have a child who maybe gets upset or gets worked up and you just can't bear it and you you end up kind of literally pulling ideas off the ship going like, I'll try this, I'll try that, I'll try this, I'll, I'll try anything. You know, you're sending mixed messages, it's confusing, it's fussy, it's stimulating, it's hectic, it's gonna prolong everything. Um, or you keep going on a plane for so long and then you decide to change it because you've had enough, or because you're exhausted. Um, and again, all that does is it teaches your child that keep going long enough or make a big enough first and there'll be an alternative outcome. And that's the last thing you wanna teach your child. If you suspect that you may do that, and if that you may have that tendency, don't even begin. Just don't even start because you'll create a monster. <laughs> you will, you'll create a stronger um, willed and a, a bigger challenge to, to work through. So make sure you're, sh you're feeling ready and able. And if you need support, you know, obviously support in the family is great. Uh, but if you need outside support, if you need somebody to help you hold you accountable and coach you through, then jump on the website and, and look at the um, options we offer because even the members club, um, our private support groups, you're gonna get that, that support that will help see, see it through. That you can check in each day and, and have that, you know, an accountability partner on its alone can make all the difference. If you know you've got to report back to someone the next day, you're far more likely to see it through. So that can that can really help if you're, you know, a little on edge or you just need that that coaching. Really, <laughs> that's all it is. It's no different to having a personal trainer to keep you moving and keep you going. So there you go. You have five steps to handling a very strong-willed little one who just won't stay in bed. So commit to a change. Begin afresh. Get a new plan discuss it with your child so they know what they're going to be doing, they know what to expect, and make that very cool, calm and positive. Set clear targets, don't just have a be good kind of rule, have a let's do these specific things and then they can understand what they need to do. Maintain that nighttime mode, cool, calm persona the whole way through and respond consistently for as long as it takes. <laughs> Do those five things and I promise you, you will get a much better settler and you'll have you know, restful nights in no time at all.